Item Number SCP-3333 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures The trap door leading to SCP-3333 is to remain shut and locked at all times. At least one operative is to remain posted under SCP-3333 at all times to prevent entry or exit. The door to SCP-3333 is to be examined for signs of damage daily. Mobile Task Force Lambda-1, Maxwell's Demons, have been created and deployed to assist in the containment of SCP-3333. Containment Procedures Revised, April 2, 2039 Description: SCP-3333 is a spatial anomaly located within the Suntop Fire Lookout, located in Mount Baker's Snoqualmie National Forest, Washington State, United States of America. SCP-3333 is accessible via a ladder and trapdoor on the ceiling of the Suntop Lookout. Climbing the ladder leads to an identical copy of the Suntop Fire Lookout. This identical copy has an identical ladder and trapdoor pair, which leads to further copies of the Suntop Lookout. The topology surrounding SCP-3333 is identical to that surrounding the Suntop Lookout, however no plant, animal, or human life have been observed. Successive SCP-3333 iterations are higher relative to the original lookout. The stairs leading up to these SCP-3333 iterations are extended by a proportional amount to allow access to the ground. SCP-3333 was first discovered at the restoration of the Suntop Lookout following volcanic activity near Mount Rainier. SCP-3333's origins are not known. No members of the Park Service involved in the restoration of the lookout were responsible for construction of the entrance to SCP-3333. At the time of discovery, the trap door to SCP-3333 was padlocked. In order to access SCP-3333, the trap door was forced open. No key has been found. Exploration 1 Mission Parameters Initial Reconnaissance of SCP-3333 Personnel D-4F-68A Additional information, D-4F-68A was equipped with standard-issue audio-visual exploration recorders. The exploration was supervised by Dr. Williams and a support team located in a temporary observation outpost inside the Suntop Fire Lookout. Log begins. Test, test, is this thing on? Yes, hello. Doctor? Excellent. Please proceed into SCP-3333. There is a brief moment of audio feedback due to the proximity between Dr. Williams and D-4F-68A. D-4F-68A climbs up the ladder into SCP-3333. Please report what you see. It's, well, I just came from here, but, but wait, it's empty, and how did it… Excellent, thank you. Please stop talking. Thank you. Please continue climbing. D-4F-68A ascends SCP-3333 for approximately an hour. Alright, I want to test something. D-4F-68A, if you don't mind, could you try opening the door and going outside? Okay, Doctor. D-4F-68A opens the door. Strong wind immediately blasts into the room, throwing D-4F-68A back against the far wall and moving the furniture. D-4F-68A struggles to get across the room and eventually manages to close the door. <sighs> what was that? <coughs> it is probably best if you stay inside for now. I, I see. D-4F-68A continues to ascend SCP-3333. Wind is audible. There is no change in the interior of SCP-3333. D-4F-68A continues for approximately three hours. D-4F-68A takes a simple multiplication-based cognition test every ten iterations of SCP-3333. No change from baseline detected. Several hours later, D-4F-68A rests and eats some rations. During this time, analysis of video footage shows D-4F-68A has climbed through 184 instances of SCP-3333. Now seems as good a time as any. I'd like you to take that test again, D-4F-68A. Alright, Doctor. D-4F-68A self-administers the cognition test. No change from baseline detected. D-4F-68A has climbed through 184 iterations of SCP-3333, corresponding to approximately 673 meters of vertical gain. While some subtle elevation difference is observable, it is far less than expected. Doctor? Yes? What is this for? The test? 
Well, I guess it can't hurt. It's to test. It's to test how thin the air is. How? As the air gets thinner, you. <sighs> well, your brain slows down, basically. I'm. Am I going to die? No, no. The test results are the same as they were down here. You're not going up as much as you should. Oh, thanks, Doctor. No problem. <coughs> Please continue climbing D4F68A. D4F68A continues climbing for four more hours. The sun sets and D4F68A makes camp and sleeps. The following morning, D4F68A continues ascending SCP-3333. Doctor, do, do you see that? What? Over there, on that peak. Are there people up there? On a ridge southwest of SCP-3333, two small figures can be seen. They are standing motionless. These figures can only be seen from D4F-688's perspective. They are not visible from base camp. Are there any binoculars in here? I need to see. Give us a good look with the camera, too. We need to zoom in. I found it. D4F-688 looks through the binoculars at the figures. Base camp attempts to zoom in on the figures with D4F-688's camera, however the resolution is too low, and nothing can be made out. I can't see them, they're just out of focus, oh god. The figures turn around and go behind the ridge. They saw the reflection of the binoculars. Are you sure? They… they looked right at me. I think one of them pointed. I see. D4F-688A is instructed to continue climbing SCP-3333. The liberations are held at base camp about the figures. No consensus is reached. D4F-688A continues climbing to the 345th iteration of SCP-3333. No other figures are spotted. D4F-688A camps until morning. The next day, D4F-688A forgets to turn his camera and microphone on until reminded. Shortly afterwards, D4F-688A expresses feelings of anxiety and unease. You gotta let me come down, Doc. Something's not right here. Something concrete? I don't know, but… but something's not right. All this writing on the walls and… There is no writing on the walls. Well, I see something, Doc. I don't know what it says, but it's there. There for sure. I see. You made it this far. Please keep going. D4F-688A continues ascending SCP-3333, occasionally requesting to be allowed to return to base. All requests are denied. Video footage is analyzed for writing or mimetic agents. None are found. On the 527th level, the topology of SCP-3333 drastically changes. Multiple copies of the Suntop Fire Lookout are connected to each other in a grid pattern, accessible through the lookout doorway. There is no natural light, and no sign of sky or ground. It is completely dark. No lookout has a trapdoor or ladder. This, this isn't right, Doc. You gotta let me down. I can't see. Calm down, please. You have an emergency headlamp and flashlight in your backpack. Please use them. D4F-688A attempts to switch on the lights. They do not turn on. D4F-688A is instructed to check the battery compartments. They are empty. D4F-688A is instructed to use the backup batteries in the backpack. D4F-688A is unable to locate them. There's nothing in here. Nothing's right. Let me down, please. No, please proceed. Wait, I think… I see something. I see something, Doc. What? What is it? Nothing is visible on D4F-688's camera. I, I don't know. It's not right. D4F-688 begins to panic. Let me come down, Doc. I've got to get out of here. You'll be summary shot if you come back down. What is it you see? D4F-688's camera and microphone cut out simultaneously. What? D4F-688? D4F-688, what just happened? Did he turn his recorders off? What happened? Analysis of the D4F-688's video footage is unable to reveal cause of communication blackout. Equipment error is ruled unlikely. Due to the circumstances surrounding D4F-688's disappearance and the possibility of an unknown anomalous object in the upper portion of SCP-3333, another expedition is proposed and approved. Exploration 2 Mission Parameters Determine the reason behind the disappearance of D4F-688A. Locate any anomalous objects located by D4F-688A and identify any anomalous entities present within SCP-3333. Personnel MTF Mod 0 Characteristic Eigenspaces Additional Information All members of MTF Mod 0 were equipped with standard-issue survival gear and recording equipment. 
No special items were deemed necessary. All batteries and backups were triple checked. Dr. Williams supervised from base camp. Log begin. Mod 1 check. Mod 2 check. Mod 3 check. Mod 4 check. Mod 5 check. Ok everyone, standard issue tower approach. Two ahead, one in the middle, two behind. Let's go. All team members begin to ascend SCP-3333. No figures are visible on nearby ridges. The sky is overcast, and the wind is audible. As the MTF climbs, the wind dies down, bit by bit. After several hours of climbing, Mod 4 and Mod 2 encounter the room where a D-4F-68A attempted to exit SCP-3333. The furniture is still in a state of disarray, and nothing appears to have been moved. Here seems as good a place as any. The members of Mod Zero gather and attempt to mount an expedition outside of SCP-3333. Mod 2 is attached to a rope and exits SCP-3333. There is no strong wind, and Mod 2 is easily able to leave. There's nothing here, Doctor. That's strange. I suppose it died down. Keep exploring, I suppose. Roger. The members of the MTF exit SCP-3333 and begin to explore. The topology around SCP-3333 is identical to that surrounding the Suntop Lookout. No plant or animal life is visible. No humanoids can be seen. The members of the MTF explore for several hours, then reconvene at SCP-3333. There's nothing here. No plant life, though. That's strange. If this pattern holds across the world here, that could account for the stronger wind patterns. Not sure where the oxygen would come from, though. Anyways, keep ascending. We can sort this out later. Roger. The MTF ascends for several more hours and camps for the night. Their pace is slower than that of D-4F-68A. They ascend SCP-3333 for several more days with no notable encounters. No auditory or visual hallucinations are noted. On the fourth day, they arrive at the apex of SCP-3333. Flashlights out, everyone. Members of the MTF equip their lanterns and flashlights. All are fully equipped with batteries, and backup batteries are double-checked. Apart from that made by the MTF, there is no sound and no light. Alright. 212 again. Arbitrary direction. Oh, let's go that way. Mod 1 points to the random direction, and the MTF proceeds in that direction. Reflector markers are left for navigation. The SCP-3333 iterations are connected horizontally, through their external walkway. There is no stairway down, and the railings have been removed such that the walkways can be pressed up and joined with each other. There is no sign of seam between the walkways, and no trace of man-made workmanship. Mod 2 pulls up a board at random from the walkway. There is nothing but blackness below. Mod 2 drops a glow stick into the hole. No bottom is visible. Mod 3 fires a signal flare into the air. No ceiling is visible. No sound or light appears. Did you notice anything strange? Such as? Any of the hallucinations reported by D-4F-68A. Anything that could indicate what he was talking about near the end. No. No sign of the body or equipment either. Do you want us to prioritize that? I think it would be somewhat helpful if you could. There doesn't appear to be a pattern or purpose to these rooms anyways. Roger. The MTS splits up and begin a radial search pattern from the origin. This continues for approximately an hour. I found something. What? What is it? Coming. Members of the MTF gather. En route, Mod 5's flashlight cuts out. What is it? It's his backpack, completely empty. It hasn't been torn or anything, though. No sign of a struggle. Was it propped up against the table when you got here? Yes, I haven't touched it. Good, let's not. Where's Graham? Graham. Everyone check in. Mod 2. Mod 3. Mod 4. We're missing Graham. Do you have a feed on his camera, Doctor? N no His flashlight's out. I can't see anything. Roger. Two by two. I'll go with race. Radio pattern out from here. Right. Okay. Yes. Mod 1 and Mod 3 pair up. Mod 2 and Mod 4 pair up. They begin a radio search pattern. There is still no sound. Dr. Williams played back Mod 5's camera footage prior to loss of communication. There is no sign of distress. The camera is transmitting, but it's completely black. Mod 2 and Mod 4 fall over. There are two loud sounds, presumably their bodies hitting the floor. A faint dripping sound can be heard. Microphones and cameras on both cut out near simultaneously. Mod 5's camera and microphone shut off. Hello, hello? We just lost feed on Mod 2 and Mod 4. There is another thud. Mod 3's microphone and camera cut out. Hello, Mod 1. 
What what just happened? I don't where's Mod 3? I turned away for a second and now there's he's Mod 1's headlamp rapidly scans the surrounding area. No sign of the rest of Mod Zero can be found. Hello? I-I think there's something in here. With me. What-what is it? Do you see words? No, I don't see anything. All four cameras and microphones reactivate. This is not simultaneous. It is consistent with the equipment manually being activated. Hello? Hello? The equipment's on. What the hell happened? I don't know, Doc. There was something on the ground and I tripped and… Where are all of you? Check in. Mod 3. Mod 5. Mod 2. Mod 4. Th Mod 1's microphone and camera suddenly cut out. Mod 1, hello? Mod 1's camera and microphone reactivate. I, I saw it too. Yes. What? Saw what? I don't know. It's spectral. Like floaters. Something here isn't right. No, we need… It isn't safe here. What are you talking about? Nothing besides a sun-top fire lookout is visible on any camera. Is there anything with you? N no it's not that, Doc. There, do you see it, Doc? Nothing invisible. No, what is it? We're not safe here. Something's not right. <laughs> it's there. What is it? It's… it looks like a… Nothing is visible through any MTF feeds. It's like a… it looks like a castle or no, a mountain. A mountain. A ghostly mountain, but… but it isn't… It's a flaming mountain, conjured of smoke and air, a tower of smoke and ash. I see it. I see it too. We need to go. Retreat, everyone. Roger. MTF Mod Zero retreats from the apex of SCP-3333 and proceeds rapidly down SCP-3333. Several days later, they arrive at base camp and are debriefed. They express confusion over the events within SCP-3333 and show a definite unwillingness to re-enter. Given the circumstances and the possibility of a memetic agent, a special counter-memetics operative is brought in for further exploration over the objections of MTF Mod Zero. Exploration 3 Mission Parameters Explore the apex of SCP-3333 and locate and neutralize any memetic anomalies or agents inside. Personnel Counter-memetic Specialist Zero Noel Walker Additional Information Specialist Zero is a deaf-blind mute and communicate solely through a modified signaling system embedded into their hand. Standard issue rations are provided. No other equipment is necessary. Dr. Williams and MTF Mod Zero supervise the operation. Log begin. Leaving base now. Let us know if you need anything. Yes. Specialist Zero begins to ascend SCP-3333. Mod 5 to Williams. I don't like this. If it was frightening enough to make your crack team turn tail and flee, it is certainly worth calling in a net. Mod 5 does not respond. Specialist Zero continues to ascend. Room different. Messy. Fight? No, that was us. Okay. A few hours pass. Someone outside. Watching. They were encountered earlier. If you keep going up… Am. Still following. Was wrong. Not watching. Something else. What do you mean? Don't know. Specialist Zero continues climbing for several more hours. At this point, Specialist Zero had been climbing for over twelve hours. Don't you need to rest? Someone's still there. Not safe. We'll use AMPH. Specialist Zero consumes 100 mg of amphetamine and continues to ascend. Outside, can you see? No, I can't. There is a flicker of motion on the edge of the camera. Something looking through the windows ducks down as soon as the camera is turned in this direction. The wind is strong. There is no chance of going outside. There's… they know. Specialist Zero begins to rapidly climb upwards. Flickers of motion are occasionally visible outside SCP-3333. Small rustling sounds can occasionally be heard over the wind. Retreat, Specialist. No. Specialist Zero continues rapidly climbing. After approximately an hour, they arrive at the apex of SCP-3333. Blood. No light. Specialist Zero starts walking. They do not turn their flashlight on. Nothing is visible on the camera, only Specialist Zero's footsteps are audible on the microphone. A loud slam is audible in the distance. Here. No hazards? Specialist Zero begins walking faster, then stops suddenly. Several small rustlings can be heard. They quickly cease. Body. There is a sound of shifting clothing as Specialist Zero bends down. 
the rustlings can be heard again, louder and closer. Get out of there, specialist. Annette! Several squishing sounds can be heard. Body. Blood. Internal organs. Muscles. Smooth. Too soft. Hard. Metal. The rustlings grow in size, getting closer and closer. They surround Specialist Zero and overlap, turning into one continuous drone. Get out, Specialist! Leave it! Go! Metal. Words. There is a thud. Incoherent signaling follows. Annette! Annette! Lights! Lights out! Where is light? Annette! There is a mountain. I need to come down. Where is the light? Annette! Specialist Zero's flashlight turns on. Specialist Zero is laying on the ground. The light illuminates a pile of muscles, organs, and bones in advanced decomposition. A metal dog tag is visibly clutched in Specialist Zero's hand. It reads, MTF Mod 5, Graham Purcell. Message received, April 2, 2039. Addendum 1. Following the events of Exploration 3, the entities inside SCP-3333, hereafter designated SCP-3333-1, killed or impersonated all members present at Temporary Observation Post 3333. No distress signal was sent, and Exploration 3 was not forwarded before its conclusion. SCP-3333-1 entities maintain the facade of observation and exploration of SCP-3333, and continually requested manpower and equipment for a period of over one month. The ruse was only discovered when a supply assistant managed to send an emergency message before being killed or impersonated. Recontainment teams arriving at SCP-3333 found it completely abandoned. Over 50 personnel were lost. Given the large number of SCP-3333-1 entities assumed to have been released, including those who did not impersonate a member of the Foundation, the single-purpose task force Lambda-1 have been created for the purpose of researching, hunting, and neutralizing SCP-3333-1 instances. Addendum 2 On April 2, 2039, a coded message was received from Dr. William Sellier phone. It did not appear to have been sent from inside SCP-3333, however, the exact location had not been identified. The message contained the following log of Dr. Williams, almost certainly as she was fleeing from MTF Mod Zero. For completion, this message is included. Reader discretion is advised. Dr. Ardman Expiration 4 The following was recorded by Dr. Williams on her cellular phone while inside SCP-3333. Log begin. The footage begins slightly after the end of Exploration 3. Dr. Williams is climbing upwards through SCP-3333, camera attached to her side. She is breathing heavily and appears to be running from something. Gunshots can be heard down below. Dr. Williams climbs upwards for approximately ten minutes, then stops to rest. She props the camera up against the table and blocks off the lower trapdoor with a chair. She sits down. She is covered in blood, is visibly panicked, and is carrying a handgun. She looks at the camera, begins to speak, then starts crying. She continues crying for approximately a minute, then stops. They got us. It was wonderfully done. Just the right amount of vagueness. And who would dare argue with a seasoned MTF deciding to turn tail and run? And of course I didn't know any of them closely, so who was I to say if there was anything wrong? There was a rattling sound. Someone was attempting to get through the trap door. Williams grabs a gun and points it at the door. Dr. Williams! Dr. Williams, this is MTF Alpha 3. We received a distress call from this outpost. We were attacked by the personnel assigned here. What's going on here, Doctor? Pounding noise. Let us in, Doctor. <laughs> Stay back. I'm not falling for it. Dr. Williams, please. We will treat you as an enemy agent if you do not let us in. Stay back! Several fingers emerge from the trap door and begin to lift it up. Williams runs over and stamps on the fingers. There is a crunching sound, and the fingers go completely flat, still trapped in the door. There is a tearing sound as they are pulled back through the door. William fires two shots through the top of the door, grabs the camera and begins climbing again. Dr. Williams climbs for approximately a minute and a half, blocking off more trap doors as she goes, then stops to vomit and cry for about ten minutes. Following this, Williams continues to climb non-stop for over twelve hours before collapsing. She remains unconscious for about two hours then wakes up screaming. I, I am still here. I'm thirsty. I wish I had grabbed a kit. It begins to rain outside SCP-3333. William starts laughing. 
Williams props up the camera, then goes outside and attempts to drink. After a short period of time, she spits and comes back inside. Salty. Williams continues to climb for an hour. There is a knock on the door of SCP-3333. Williams immediately stops and pulls out her gun. She is breathing heavily, and her hands are shaking. There is another knock, this time on the other side of SCP-3333. Williams turns around. D-4F-6AA is standing at the door. He is extremely emaciated, and is leaning against the door. His skin is dry, cracked, and ulcerated, falling off in places almost. He attempts to open the door. There is a simple knob lock on the door. He cannot open it. Let me in, Doc. Get back. Williams backs away from the door and points her gun at D-4F-6-8A. He continues rattling at the door. Please, Doc, let me in. There's no water out here. It's not. You're not. He never called me Doc. Not once. There is silence. D-4F-6-8A's face goes completely slack. I never really watched him. Ever since you were a child, though, I always thought you had very pretty eyes. D-4F-6-8A breaks one of the door's panes with his fist. There is no blood. He reaches and turns the knob. Williams begins firing. D-4F-6-8A opens the door and begins running at Dr. Williams. Williams fires at D-4F-6-8A five times. One bullet hits his leg and he collapses. He begins writhing on the ground. His skin only partially follows his motion. It is as if there is something inside of him sliding around. Williams fired five more times. One hit D-4F-6-8A's arm. There is no blood. His arm looks flat. D-4F-6-8A attempts to flip over and crawl away. His arms flap behind him like rubber. There is no support in his arms. Williams screams. There is a large writhing mass in the center of D-4F-6-8A's chest. The rest of D-4F-6-8A flaps around it, entirely useless. There is a loud flapping sound from inside D-4F-6-8A. Williams fires four more times. Two shots hit D-4F-6-8A in the chest. There is a tearing sound the camera falls over. Williams fires once more, and the gun clicks empty. There is a loud, dry thud. Williams picks up the camera. She appears to be in shock. Williams sets the camera down and vomits. She picks the camera up again, then points it at the corpse of D-4F-6-8A. There is a large black pile slumped against the broken window. Clear gelatinous blood oozes out of it. It does not move. It appears to be dead. The exact physiology of the entity is difficult to discern. It appears to have thick, semi-transparent wings. A pile of skin lays on the ground. It is torn apart. It's… it's… Dr. Williams attempts to throw up again, however she is only able to retch for several seconds. There is a fetish among humans at the deepest level, about enlightenment and height, about ignorance and depth. Here we are, on a castle in the sky, on a mountain in the air, the God Pillar, a recursive stack, and here at the top we find nothing, a dead world, an unfulfilled promise. I just want… I just want to go home. Williams proceeds to climb for several minutes, blocking each trapdoor as she goes. She stops for a moment. She begins to laugh. I finally did it, though, Annette. I'm here, Annette. Williams begins to cry. Several minutes later, Williams composes herself and resumes climbing. Approximately half an hour later, she arrives at the apex of SCP-3333. Dr. Williams turns on the flashlight. It illuminates the sun-top fire lookout. Nothing else is visible. There is no sound or external light. Hello? Hello? A pause. Williams' voice does not echo. There is no reply. There's nothing up here. There never was. Floating words. A ghostly mountain pu- I had still hope, though, I think. Williams walks around SCP-3333's apex for a few minutes. There's just nothing here. Nothing at all. Dr. Williams sits down and props up the camera on a table. I wish I could think. Footsteps can be heard in the distance. Oh shit. The footsteps get closer. They are uneven and rough, heavy feet slamming with each step. Occasionally they stop, and there is a wet thunk as the person hits furniture or a wall. No. No. The body of Specialist Zero stumbles into view. The flesh is unevenly stretched, lumpy and disfigured. Patches have fallen off, showing nothing but the writhing body of the thing inside. The head hangs limp, and flops down onto the chest. The overall body moves jerkily with little sense of purpose or direction. Williams wretches, apparently from the smell. Annette! The entity staggers into the room. 
William steps back and away. The entity swivels to look at the direction of the footstep. Something enters the head. It gains structure and form and stands up. There are scratches around the eyes and ears. The entity attempts to vocalize. A wet, gurgling sound comes out. Annette! Williams begins sobbing. The entity removes structure from the head. Its internal structure completely collapses and the head falls back. Williams raises her gun and attempts to shoot the entity. The gun is empty. Williams still attempts to shoot. The gun clicks. Williams continues sobbing. The gun continues to click. Williams drops to her knees and drops the gun. The entity gets closer. It has trouble walking. Has trouble moving. It staggers, lumpy and misshapen. The torso is special as zero rise. It is as if something is tangled in a sheet, trying to get out. I'm sorry. There is a tearing sound. The flesh of Specialist Zero rips. It is difficult for the entity inside. The skin is tough, and the interior layer of fat does not want to give way. A barbed stinger shoots through the tear and punctures Dr. Williams' skin. Williams collapses. The stinger appears to contain a paralytic agent. Specialist Zero's skin continues to rip. A large black entity climbs out, discarding the skin. It has large semi-translucent wings and a large sucker appendage on its chest. It does not have any visible eyes. Its skin is extremely thin. Organs can be seen through some viscous internal fluid, but no bones. It approaches Williams, making a wrestling with its wings as it moves. It reaches Williams and thrusts its appendage into the wound. There is a sucking noise and a dripping sound. Chunks of semi-liquefied organs and bone emerge from the back end of the entity, sucked out entirely until there is nothing but an empty sheet of skin. The entity, still attached to the skin, contorts its body and slips into the wound. The skin jerks as the entity fits into it. The skin fills out into the form of Williams. The entity stands up. The entity turns off the camera. Log end.